Okay, so we just came off of our first assessment on population dynamics. Students really struggled with the graph on this one, and I think it was primarily because of the um, uh, in the population dynamics, we were focusing more on trends, and I didn't focus as much as what the numbers were saying on the axes. And so I think that when the assessment came up, I was having them make predictive models. I gave them some data, which I think is the problem because I think they struggled with the idea of having a few pieces of data and then having to fill in the gaps using like extrapolation or predictive models. And I think for some of them also, they just struggled because with population dynamics, we're not looking at linear patterns and trends. There's a lot of fluctuations involved. Um, and so just that whole idea of dynamic equilibrium, I think they understand dynamic equilibrium, but the modeling of it um, just was something they struggled with. So. I'm in a position where um, our school has in-class um, spec ed support one day a week. And so uh, we have been encouraged to use that time with those teachers to do small group instruction. And so um, I'm going to demo or try uh, a small group instruction for the first time using um, some of the graphing skills that we need to be practicing. So. For context, we've been talking a little bit about climate change, sustainable agriculture, that kind of stuff this week. And so when we're talking about um, climate change and kind of the sun's impact and, and play as part of this, this also then ties in some of that science curricula where we have to talk about uh, space phenomena and how they impact things here on earth. And so to tie this all together, I wanted a data set that wasn't linear. I wanted something with like a nice predictive pattern, a nice curve, um, and could be sequential or like scaffolded to increase the complexity as we went through. And so I decided to go um, as a starting line with the number of hours of daylight. So how I'm going to organize my class tomorrow is not invisibly random groups. I'm actually going to group them on purpose into groups of four, um, putting together groups based off of where they kind of messed up or, or faltered when it came to the graph on the assessment we did. And so everybody in the room, um, sorry, so then I will have six groups of four students in my room, and then me and the um, spec ed teacher are each going to have three groups that we work through. So we'll spend about 20 to 25 minutes with each group of uh, four as we go through the class, and then the students will have two other tasks that they're working on through the day while we're not specifically working with them um, in four-on-one kind of ratios. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off the same with every group. We're going to build a graph. The graph is going to be based off of the number of daylight hours that Kitchener, Ontario gets every month. Um, so we're looking at average sunlight time frames. And then so they'll basically be able to plot a simple like X and Y graph, um, get practice on like where to put different things on the axes. I'm going to emphasize that this is a scatter plot. I know this data could in theory be like a bar graph and other things like that. We're going to do a scatter plot because we want to practice the idea that we can connect the dots with a smooth curve. So we're going to have this model of what the daylight hours look like. Students will see that the it peaks in the summer, which makes a lot of sense because we get more sunlight in the summer. And then uh, more um, when we're in the northern hemisphere uh, further away from the equator as we are here in Ontario, uh, then we get more sunlight in the summer, less in the winter. Then um, the other teacher and I, based off of which group we're working with, we're now going to jump to level two, three, or four. So depending on the group and the needs of the group, based off of how they did on the assessment we just did, we'll jump. So uh, those that struggled with the idea of using like data and models and kind of integrating those two ideas, and those that struggle to have two sets of data points on one, like two um, data sets on one graph, we're going to jump to level two. So for level two, I grabbed the data from Sydney, Australia. Um, Sydney, Australia is the opposite of Ontario in terms that it's in the Southern Hemisphere. So you should see similar peaks and valleys, but you will also see them in opposite. And we're going to use the idea of getting students to predict what they think this graph or trend line should look like. So they'll have the graph of Kitchener, they'll have to predict what Sydney, Australia would look like, draw that on, and then they will add the data points, graph it, and then see how well their model fits with what they predicted. Those students that were okay with a second set of data points, but maybe struggled with the idea of like a mirror image or like a non-identical patterning. So for predator-prey relationships, sometimes you can get them to be like fairly obviously the same. Sometimes they're totally different. And so I wanted to have a data set that was different when we were looking at the second model. So when I'm looking at group number 
um, the groups that can handle second data sets, but maybe a slightly different model look, um, they're going to jump to level three. Level three is the data from Nassau, Bahamas. Nassau is in the same hemisphere as um, Ontario, so it'll still be the same um, in terms of peaking at the same time. Um, however, uh, it will have uh, like the peak heights should be less. And so we'll again have students predict what they think the model should look like, and then they'll graph their data and see how well they came to their model. So in this case, we have a similar pattern, but the graph shape is going to look a little different. It's going to be a little more compressed, um, which should hopefully be um, something that makes sense to them because they're closer to the equator. They're going to have more hours of sunlight each day. For those students that can handle the idea of modeling um, and second data sets, but struggled with the idea of needing two different axes to be able to represent um, the data in a way that we can actually make true correlations between them, that's who's going to jump to level four. So with predator prey graphs, often we'll have the predator and the prey on the same graph, but we'll have different axes for each of them to make it so that we can see that pattern if they work side by side. So what I've grabbed is the uh, temperatures of Lake Ontario um, over month by month for averages as well. So what we'll be able to do then is we'll have our graph of sunlight. Students will be asked to predict what they think the temperatures of Lake Ontario will be over month by month as they go. Um, this is going to mirror the predator-prey relationship and the fact that you're going to get a stag, like the, same, the, the trend should be the same. You should see an increased peak and then come down, but you're going to see it offset or shifted. So um, because your um, heat and your hours of sunlight are going to translate to a slightly offset when we get into that like maximum temperature of our lake. So um, this will require us to have two totally different axes because you can't have um, hours and degrees uh, Celsius. This is Fahrenheit. You can convert them to degrees Celsius if you wanted to as well. Um, I'm just working with the data that I was able to grab from online. So uh, this then, um, they'll need two different axes and then they'll be able to see if there's a correlation between the two of them um, because of if the patterns actually match up with each other or not. So that's an example of how we can one do small group instruction so it's targeted um, lessons and um, levels of difficulty based off of where meeting where students' needs are in that moment. Um, and then also it kind of walks through kind of a way to like thinkify or to bring um, a bunch of things together and kind of mix them all together to bring them and, and develop skills and, and reinforce ideas that we've been working on so far this year. So I just wanted to share this as an example of a type of lesson you could do um, in science or, or in a bunch of other classes actually this would probably work in a geography class or a math class as well so um anyways i just wanted to show you kind of what small group instruction can look like in your classroom and um let me know if you have any questions